Who are you here to meet today? Um, his name is Jim. Jim, how old is Jim? He said he was 14. Okay, do you, do you meet with 14s often? No, no. You never never meet with 14 year olds? No, or not at Have all. you had sex with a minor before? Nope. No. What was up with this one? What were you, what were you guys plans with this uh, minor? Um, just, he was gonna come back to my apartment, or my uh, hotel. hotel room, uh -huh. and we were we were gonna talk for a little bit, and I was just gonna start asking him questions to okay. see. Is that what you guys said you guys were gonna do? I'm sorry. Yeah. Nothing sexual? You had no plans of being sexual? I had sexual? no plans for sexual. Okay, yeah. you understand I have the book. I have every text message from start to finish. Okay. So was it sexual? Um, it might, it was probably gonna end that way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you know bringing a 14 year old in your car, that'd be kidnapping? I... They can't consent to get in your car. Just, just so you know. But you're happily married, what are you doing? I am, I, just curiosity. <clears throat> How many pedophiles you caught? 288. How many kids you found? I'm gonna do something that a lot of people won't do in regards to this movie. Now, I'm not giving a critique or review of the movie, which would be strange since I haven't seen the movie. I do plan on seeing the movie, but I wanna show something. I wanna let you all into a world that you will not probably have known or have even thought about. Matter of fact, it would make you uncomfortable to think about. We talk about this, this issue of child sex trafficking but we really only talk about it from one vantage point. Now, before I go into where I'm going, I didn't realize that there was that big of a, a deal in terms of people who had a problem with, one, this movie, and then really the reason why. We're going to kind of try to drill down into this, this issue. There is, there is pushback from people who you just, well, I wouldn't say that you wouldn't think that they would, but there just shouldn't be any pushback whatsoever regarding this. There should be none whatsoever. And so I would say this, two things. One, if you have not seen the movie or made plans to go see the movie, go see the movie. Go see the movie. As a matter of fact, uh, if you don't know what the movie's about, maybe you haven't, but here's a, here's a trailer, here's a part of a trailer for that movie. It is the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. It has already passed the illegal arms trade and soon it's gonna pass the drug trade. Because you can sell a bag of cocaine one time with a child five to ten times a day. God's children are not for sale. Now, I like when he said that God's children are not for sale. This is for the movie The Sound of Freedom. It's getting a lot of buzz. As a matter of fact, it's getting a lot of buzz from people who haven't even seen the movie or who don't want others to see the movie. And there is a reason why. I'll talk about the reason why on the other side, but... Some of you all have seen this interview that was done by, by uh, I think it's Jesse Waters on Fox with one of the men that's involved with the show. And so let me let you listen to him and then we'll go to someone else who has a differing view on this. Why is the media hating this movie? You know, I can't understand it. The film was made, produced, written like five years, six years ago, way before anyone heard the name QAnon. I still don't even know what QAnon is. Uh, in the meantime, they're trying to connect it to some conspiracy when, in fact, like you said, this is a true story. These are real kids. I mean, I'm, I, these kids are my friends. They're young adults now, the ones that were rescued. They're going to come out soon and tell their story. It's going to be very awkward when the mainstream media comes after these kids next and accuses them of being part of some conspiracy when, in fact, they were rescued from a life of rape. It's now, before we go back to it, one of the things that, that's happening is there are people that are saying that this QAnon uh, or that there are people that are connected with QAnon that are uh, involved in this in this video. I don't know that to be the case or not. I do find it strange, though, that they are always quick. Certain people, certain folks on the left tend to be pretty quick on pulling the trigger on what is a conspiracy or having conspiracy theories. When someone on the right has a conspiracy theory, they shoot them down as though it's absolute nonsense. But this, the only reason why this movie is getting steamed, the only reason why this movie is being pushed is to bring folks into this whole little QAnon registry and so forth. And something having to do with Jim Caviezel also, who is the uh, the main actor, that he is supportive of this. I don't know that to be the case. And the truth be told, honestly, in regards to this, I really could care less. And you should also. It's, it's, it's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen in the media, perhaps. I mean, this publication says The Sound of Freedom is a superhero movie for dads with brain worms. 
and that it fetishizes the torture of its child victims. Is that what the movie does? It absolutely does not do that. It tells a story based in truth. And, you know, what I think is happening, Jesse, I think that the left and the, these, these media outlets, they don't want to have a discussion that this film is going to compel. A discussion. Now, what he's, what he's saying is that they're, they're, it, it's motivating people that might have a desire to kind of be vigilantes and so forth who are maybe sick and tired of where the country's going. Is there some of that? Yeah, there's going to be some folks that are sick and tired of the way this country's going, and this adds to it because this country is going in a way that no one ever would have imagined, especially when you think about how kids are being treated. These are folks, these are people who ha cannot defend themselves. These are people who don't know enough to defend themselves, but yet and still they are fair game for the vultures out there. And there are people who are making money off of them. There are people who are making this into sport, into how we're going to deal with them. There's going to be a price to pay at some point in time in the future. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to look like, nor does anyone else, but there's going to be a price to pay. And I'm not even talking about the price we're going to pay at the hands of God. That part should scare everyone. But in terms of what's going to happen, when, because these children that we're messing over, these children that we're allowed to be victimized, they're going to grow up. Now, what state they're going to be when they grow up, who knows? Who knows how much anger they're going to have, how much rage, how much depression, how much confusion. If you think that people have lost their minds today, what about the kids that we're literally experimenting on? How are they going to be in the future? But he makes a point in, here, and I'm going to play this. And this point, I think he has a lot of a lot of things right on this point that he's getting ready to make. Discussion about why 85,000 children showed up unaccompanied at the border and got released into the interior of a country that is uh, the highest consuming country for child exploitation material on the planet. They don't want to talk about why they, the same publications are pushing an agenda to change the word pedophile to minor attracted persons in order to normalize sexual activity with children. I think that's what they're trying to avoid. And they know this film is going to shine a light on all of the things, all the atrocities happening to children. And so they have to discredit it by lying about it. And I agree with that. I agree. Listen, there are eight. We talk about this, that there were 85,000 unaccompanied minors who showed up. Why? Now, I know here in America, we, we want to think that we're the only ones that love our children. But no, people in Mexico, people in Guatemala, people in Venezuela, people in Peru, people in people in uh, El Salvador, they love their children as well. And so just as much as we would think it'd be unfathomable for us to let our children go unaccompanied on a thousand miles, Mexico is not a small country, especially if you're going to walk it. It's not a small country to trek. And so would you let your child go on this dangerous trek in hopes of living in America? And oh, by the way, the guy that's going to let you take you take take your children there is going to be some guy who's a known drug dealer, some guy who's not a bad, who's not a good guy. Do you think parents are voluntarily signing up for that? They are not. And I'm going to tell you how I know some of this stuff in just a little bit. But the fact of the matter is there's this pushback. And the pushback, whenever you bring up anything about protecting children, there are certain people, certain elements of our society that don't want you to think about protecting children. Because if we protect them over here, well, we've got to protect them over there, which means we need to protect their sexuality or uh, disturbing their sexuality. And again, that goes against uh, an extreme agenda to take these children's uh, life away. And I mean take their life away, life as they know it or as any other healthy adult would have known it because they didn't have the experience of growing up as children. They were experimental. They were lab rats for people to figure out uh, to figure out their own sexual pleasures. And I do mean they are lab rats for someone else's sexual uh, pleasure, their own gratification. We'll talk about that more in just a little bit. But you probably have heard this interview that was put up by on CNN with Abby Phillips. Uh, I'll talk about her just a little bit as well. But she brings on a person who, who is espousing himself a conspiracy about the movie. And you seem pretty familiar with him because he doesn't really hide his association with this real wild plot uh, that that involves, you know, drinking the blood of children and things like that. No, he doesn't hide it at all. And you have a lot of people who are in this world of QAnon who say, oh, they don't know what that is. They've never heard of it. They're just asking questions. With somebody like Jim Caviezel, he is openly embracing it. He's openly using its catchphrases and its concepts. He's speaking at QAnon conventions. And this film is being marketed to either specific QAnon believers or to people who believe all of the same tenets as QAnon. Now, let me ask you, ask you guys a question especially those that have gone to watch it or those that are going to watch it, that made plans to watch it. Are any of you all that you know of 
members of QAnon. I, I, I plan on watching. I'm not a member of QAnon. No one else that I know is a member of QAnon. And, and it's almost as though QAnon is this, this great big boogeyman. It's a small group of people, not very large, but they make it out to be that they are in this, this, this grand conspiratorial uh, scheme to take over the world, to overthrow the government and so forth, which is, which is not true at all. Yeah, the, the QAnon, QAnon is a, is a boogeyman. But it's rallying to people. But a lot of folks that are going to watch it have no idea who QAnon is, nor could care less because of the point that they are speaking of. QAnon is not the issue. The issue is and are these children. But claim they don't know what it is. And The Sound of Freedom does focus on a real issue of sex trafficking. Uh, but that theme, it, it's sort of like that kernel of truth that feeds the QAnon conspiracy theory. Now, I want you to hear what she's saying. There's a, there's a kernel of truth to what's happening here. Now, it's not the main thing. It's not that big a deal. That's the vibe you have to get from her. She said it's, it, it's a kernel of truth. Listen to where they're going. Uh, tell us how those two things work together. Sure, and the most durable and the most believable conspiracy theories are not entirely false. There's something in them that is true and the rest of it is false, but the believers point to the one true thing and they say, oh, you don't believe that this particular thing is true. In terms of child trafficking, we know trafficking is real. We know it has real victims. No one is denying that. But these films are created out of moral panics. They're created out of bogus statistics. They're created out of fear. And with something like Sound of Freedom, it specifically is looking at QAnon concepts of these child trafficking rings that are run by the high level elites and only people like Tim Ballard and only people like Jim Caviezel and by extension only people like the ticket buyer can help bring these trafficking rings down. So there's a very participatory element. You're not just going to see a movie, you're just killing two hours on a hot day. You are helping bring down these, these pedophile rings and save children. Now it's not true, but it's a very comforting and it's a very warm feeling to have. The irony is that if you watch CNN or, or a, a, lot of, a lot of mainstream media outlets, they will put up other films that are designed to wear, to bring about awareness and that by watching it, you can help stamp out, let's say, for example, racism. You can help stamp out gender dysphoria. You can help stamp out whatever just by watching the movie. But now if there's a movie that is bringing a, attention to an actual legitimate cause, something that we know is a problem and we know these people are defenseless, that's a problem. And then he, if you notice, he mentioned these bogus statistics. You know, the problem with, with, with saying that to some degree, he has he has a point about calling them bogus statistics. You know why? Because there's just so much of it. We don't know how many children are being trafficked. We don't have a full handle on it. All we do know is that it is a lot. That's the point. There's a lot of children that are being affected, not just here in America. Again, we're talking about 85,000 children on a company that come here. And we don't know where they're coming from, where they're, where they're from, where they're headed to. We're going to talk about this network that has been set up if you think that this is just something that's just happening now some of this isn't is unsophisticated but some of this also is uh sophisticated and it's not just happening here but as he said that we are this country and other western countries as well that means canada that means the uk but definitely america we are the largest consumer of child porn and children who are trafficked sexually without question the gentleman that you saw in the in the early part of in, in, in the uh, intro, the guy that was going to meet the kid, the 14 year old, you I, that happens a lot. That happens a lot. I'm going to tell you how I know in just a little bit. But this woman, Abby Phillips, there was a time it, when you first heard of her, she, she became even more famous because of President Trump. She asked a question and then Trump excoriated her. And I thought at the time that that actually. Uh, Trump went a little bit too far. You want him to rein in Robert Mueller? What a stupid question that is. What a stupid question. But I watch you a lot. You ask a lot of stupid questions. I no longer have a problem with that. I no longer have a problem with that because where she has positioned herself, she is no ally for one America, but then obviously even for the kids. Because she, she could choose a line of questioning or just simply quit. Someone would hire her. But to make yourself a part of what's happening here. And, and by the way, guys, it's not just CNN. And oh, by the way, this is not just happening now. Th as he said, this movie was, was put together in the works over five years ago or about five years ago. I didn't know that, which is amazing. 
it's one of those independent films, not from a, a major production house. And when you look at just the, the video, the quality of it, pretty good. It's pretty, pretty top notch. So amen to that. Glad that the awareness comes out and comes out in a, in a quality fashion. But CNN reporting on this is they're they're not the first to do so. They're not the first to do so. Uh, as a matter of fact, here is a an interview on MSNBC of all people, some two two years ago. But perhaps no issue is more important than the conspiratorial thinking that has led many otherwise well-meaning Americans to raise awareness about child sex trafficking epidemic that simply does not exist. To now, Jersey said she this she's raising awareness of a child sex epidemic, a child sex trafficking epidemic that simply does not exist. That was her words. Joining us now, staff writer at The Atlantic, Caitlin Tiffany. So, Caitlin, um, tell us, first of all, about the conspiracy that's being pushed here. Yeah, so um, this is sort of looking at the long tail of some really vivid conspiracy theories that people probably heard a lot about last summer. But it's become sort of a popular piece of folklore now that there's several hundred thousand children going missing in the United States every year. Um, and that's circulated as fact, mostly on social media. Those kinds of things where people were really um, fervently believing and promoting this idea that there is this epidemic of child sex trafficking. And But according to them, I guess, th this is no epidemic. There's no epidemic. This is this is all made up. This is what it really is, is trash. And I'm going to I'm going to say something just a little bit. I want to get these things out of the way. But this is this is without question, just trash. Now, this was two years ago and children vanishing in the United States and that, um, you know, the government or the media is either complicit in some way or just willfully overlooking it or um, paying more attention to other things like the pandemic. Or um, I also heard a lot about the media paying attention to the Black Lives Matter movement instead of the missing children. All over the country, well-meaning Americans are convinced. Now, what I want to do is, I'm going to let I'm going to play a little bit of of, the, of this excerpt from her. But uh, you ever wonder why maybe CNN might not want you to see what was happening? This is because could it could it possibly be could it possibly be that one of their friends, one of their buddies, one of their executives, uh, this particular gentleman here? Let's see if I can put this on the screen. This gentleman here uh, was indicted. Former CNN producer John Griffin sent sentence to 19 years for trying to lure a child in. May, maybe that has something to do with the fact that CNN is against it uh, and other people that are partnered with them. May, maybe, because you haven't heard a peep from them about him. That hadn't happened. But let's finish letting her read part of this Atlantic article. That human trafficking, and specifically child sex trafficking, is happening right in their backyard, or at any rate, no farther away than the nearest mall parking lot. Of course, child sex trafficking does happen, and it is horrible. The crime is a serious concern of human rights organizations and governments all over the world. Statistically, however, it is hard to get a handle on the data, get a handle on the data, often misleading when they exist at all. Whatever the incidents, sex trafficking does not involve Tom Hanks or hundreds of thousands of children. So it's not a big problem. It, 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 it's, it's not a big problem and it does not involve hundreds of thousands of children. Well, you're right. It does not involve hundreds of thousands of children. It involves millions of children. Somewhere between two to three million globally. It's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. And... They want to minimize this. Now, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to do me a favor. Now, there, the, the, the likelihood is that uh, I can see YouTube doing something with this particular video, making it not uh, rated or what have you for, uh, for the average audience, I can, which is fine, um, that, that this particular video would be demonetized, which is, which is fine. But I want you to do me a favor because I want people to hear what I'm going to say in just a little bit. I want people to hear what I'm getting ready to say, the part that you don't know about, the part that they don't speak about. I want people to hear this. So do me a favor. You guys know I don't ask this very often, but I would love for you all. Uh, there's over 400 people right now that are that are watching it on the different channels and so forth. Uh, I want you all to push like because I want them to be forced to push that. I want people to hear what I'm going to say about this 
in just a little bit. But do me a favor, push this out by pushing, by hitting the like button for the algorithm again. I don't normally do this, but this is one of these moments where I think it's I think it's necessary. So that being the case, they're saying that it's not that big of a deal, that the government is not complicit or the government has not turned a deaf uh, a, a, a deaf ear or a blind eye to it, looked away. That be a, that's a hard sell to make when just recently, and I mean a couple of weeks ago, there was a U.S. House committee dealing with just this, a, a Biden official from Health and Human Services who was tasked to go down to the border to see about this crisis. She becomes a whistleblower and listen to her testimony since this is not an epidemic. 85,000 that are missing today. Children will work overnight shifts at slaughterhouses, factories, restaurants to pay their debts to smugglers and traffickers. Today, children will be sold for sex. Today, children will call a hotline to report they are being abused, neglected, and trafficked. And we don't know if they're going to get the help they need. For nearly a decade, unaccompanied children have been suffering in the shadows when I volunteered to help the Biden administration with the crisis at the southern border. As part of Operation Artemis, I was deployed to the Pomona Fairplex Emergency Intake Site in California to help HHS, Office of Refugee Resettlement, reunite children with sponsors in the United States. I thought I was going to help place children in loving homes. Instead, I discovered that children are being trafficked through a sophisticated network that begins with recruiting in home country, smuggling to the U.S. border, and ends when ORR delivers a child to a sponsor some sponsors are criminals and traffickers and members of transnational criminal organizations. Some sponsors view children as commodities and assets to be used for earning income. This is why we are witnessing an explosion of labor trafficking. Now, whether it's intentional or not, it could be argued that the United States government has become the middleman in a large scale, multi-billion dollar child trafficking operation that is run by bad actors seeking to profit off of the lives of children. Now, I don't know if you caught what she said, but what's happening is these children are being brought up. Now, remember, and, I'm, and I misspoke. I said 85,000 unaccompanied minors. No, I'm sorry. I, I misspoke. It's worse. 85,000 that are missing unaccompanied minors. There are far more unaccompanied minors that have come, but that's that many that are missing. How it happens is this. When, it, when a person comes into the country, because what we need to do actually is to do something with the border, because if you make a market, if you create a market and what America has done because of its border situation and being light on crime in some areas, you have made you have you, you have you have laid a trap. You have lined the streets with honey um, so that the bees can attack. In other words, we have made a market for these children. They can come into the country and then when they come into the country, they're here illegally. But because they're children and we care so much about the children that we will have these sponsors who are set up. These sponsors, in many cases, in most cases, tend to be people who have nefarious backgrounds. This is a sophisticated operation. And so what ends up happening this is why she said the United States government become the member. This is a, a Biden. A, well, she's probably a former Biden official. But this is a Biden official who's saying that the federal government is allowing these people to become middlemen or or sponsors thereby making the United States a middleman. In other words, here the trafficker brings this child in. The child is placed in the United States government's care and then sent away to one of these sponsors. In many cases, a sponsor is a sponsor for multiple children. And we know this and we're not doing anything about it. How in the world can this guy be a sponsor for this child, that child, that child, when clearly this child doesn't know them? And what's happening is, and I don't know this, I didn't know this at first, but some of these folks that may come from a place, let's say, like, like Guatemala, who may have a Mayan dialect and cannot speak Spanish with the others. And so here you've got a kid that can't even communicate with the people that are trying to help them to cry out and tell them that something bad is happening. Why don't people care? Because people are commodities. One, if it, get out, if it gets out, it makes the government look bad. Well, we should look bad, but what we ought to do is, because remember, we had a problem if you put pictures that were in the in the uh, Ob Obama era, put them in the Trump era, blame Trump for having these kids caged in houses. Well, you know what's worse than that? Having kids sold on the streets for sex, having them trafficked. 
it's, it's, it's as though no one is actually thinking, how does a kid from Guatemala end up in America and then some sort of way find himself or herself across the ocean? They didn't swim to China. They didn't swim to uh, to Europe. They didn't swim to Asia. Someone took them there because, again, this trafficking is big business. And as he said, there are all these people who you can sell, a, you, you can sell some drugs. You can sell some dope. Once it's smoked up, once it's snorted, that's it. But with a child, they are reusable commodities to these people. And for someone to think that the, that this isn't an ongoing epidemic, how many times do we see these things where the, the local government, and I'll talk about the local government in a second, but the local government is having these things. And every time, every time the local government puts out these little sting, stings to catch these sex traffickers, they always net people just like this one. More than 100 people in handcuffs accused of preying on women and minors forced into the sex trade. The undercover bust comes on the heels of a newly created human trafficking squad at the Hillsborough Sheriff's Office. That's where Fox 13's Aaron Mesmer is for us right now. And it sounds like maybe these operations are paying off. Yeah, and, and Sheriff Chad Chronister says undercover detectives actually made contact with more than 1,000 people, potential Johns, people who may have participated uh, in this sex trade, and many of them declined to come to Hillsborough County because they knew how successful these stings have been. The undercover sting, dubbed Operation Roundup, netted at least 125 men accused of exploiting and preying on minors and adults for sex. Those arrested include a Hillsborough public school teacher and a pastor from Tampa. This was happening. Now, can I just tell you something? Let, let's just put this on the screen. I want you to see this. In Ecclesiastes 3, 16 says, Furthermore, I have seen under the sun that the place of justice, there is wickedness. In the place of justice, there is wickedness. I'll say it again. In the place of justice, there is wickedness. And in the place of righteousness, there is wickedness. Does that not describe the state of our country? Is truth be told, the state of the world? It's always been that children have been used and monopolized and so forth and taken advantage of. But if there's ever a place that it should be stopped, or at least there should be an effort, a concerted effort to stop it, it should be here in America, but it's not. Now, I ask you to push the like button to push this out because of what I'm getting ready to say. Because Corey, what, what makes you, what makes you a, an expert or an authority on this? Have you ever been trafficked? No, no. Corey, have you ever met a child that's been trafficked? No. Have you come in contact with one? Maybe you didn't know, but you've come in contact with a child that's been trafficked. Not that I know of. I'm sure I may have I've passed one on the street some sort of way, but no. Well, then, Corey, why are you talking about this? Because of where I was. Remember, where I was, there were some guys that just messed up, but then there were some guys that truly deserved to be in prison. And I mean for life. Anyone who messes up, anyone who sins, anyone who finds himself at the bottom of the barrel, they can be redeemed by God. There's nobody, there's no soul that God can't touch, that can afflict, that he can't do anything, he can't bring them, there's no one. However, let's just be honest, there are a lot of people who have no desire to change. One of the fastest growing segments of offenders in prison, both state and federal, are sex offenders. As a matter of fact, I think it's the, the third largest group, the number, the number three group in the, in the Federal Bureau of Prisons of offenders are sex offenders. That being the case, you need to also understand that there are people that have been charged with other crimes who don't, it's not, it's not based on sex offense. You need to understand that there are there are kids, there are people that are there who may have been arrested on a drug charge, but also have a sex offense history or may have been caught with something else. But because, it, let's say it was the state, the state picked it up on they found drugs and they may have found some paraphernalia. They may have found some underage children. Happens a lot. I can't tell you how often it happens. And the sex offense charge doesn't stick. The reason why, because when it goes feds, if the feds decide to pick it up, the feds are going to try to pick up the one thing that's the easiest. Oftentimes it's, it's easy. If you get caught with some illegal drug, that's it. There, there, there really is not a whole lot of wiggle room for you. There is beginning to be more wiggle room for the sex offender if they're caught with, let's say, an underage child. You can talk your way out of that in the feds rather than having to take their time to prosecute that 
this is the easier one. So there are a lot of people that, that are there on drug offense charges or weapons charges who are sex offenders. There are those who are there for a second time, a third time, a fourth time who previously had a sex offense. This is so serious. When I, I can't tell you how many people that I've come across who are literal animals. There are some men there that really wanted to get the, get the help they needed. They're, they are there. But what's happening is we're housing these people and we're putting them in a society where there's other sex offenders and they don't even grieve the, the crime that they committed. They don't even find it a problem because there's other people to say, hey, yeah, they, they, they gave us way too much time. All it was was a few pictures. Well, first of all, even if it were a few images, a few pictures, it wasn't a cartoon picture. This was someone's actual child that you have pictures of or you have videos of and you're selling it. The reason why that is a, why this is happening, because you as the, the sex offender, the person that's housing or buying child porn, you have created a market and someone's got to take care of that market. Someone's got to supply that market. Oh, by the way, while we're taking pictures of them, we'll take, we're taking pictures of them in the act with someone else who we're also selling to. So they're getting an extra use from these children. Guys, this is what is happening. It is, a, as he says, the fastest growing illegal trade in the world. It's growing and pretty soon it's going to pass the drug trade. Why? Because people have these sexual fetishes that, that must be met. And there's always going to be someone there that's going to be ready, willing, and able to supply it as long as you've got the money. You catch one of these kids, they don't know what to do. The kids, you know how hard it is to get a kid to be able to tell on the perpetrator, to identify the perpetrator satisfactory to where that person can be prosecuted, even if the person is here in the country. There are people that I know personally in prison who had children in their basement, who had kids locked up, who had kids on their payroll. You, I couldn't tell you how many times other men have told me, I've seen it before, where a, a, a guy pulls up in his car, he's selling something, but he's got a, got a 13-year-old with him, a 14-year-old with him, boy or girl. I had, a, I had an occasion to speak with a young man who wanted to put his, he, 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 he professed to have in faith in Christ, and he asked me, Corey, he said, listen, would you mind mentoring me? And so I did. And so we got to talking. And he said to me, why well, I said to him, I said, well, what do your parents think about this? And he mentioned about things that he had growing in his life that he was molested by someone, turned out to end up being his father. But what he told me was that his parents, his family didn't think that he was a monster. Well, first of all, the father part, that's a whole other thing because we can see what happens. Bad parenting can lead people down the road to doing some bad things. But I asked him, I said, so you mean tell me you don't think that you're a monster? He said, no, I don't think so. I said, why not? He said, I, I think I just, I, I, I messed up. I made a mistake. Well, let's get this straight. You were going to meet a woman, allegedly a woman. That part is true because I saw his paperwork. Going to look at a woman, visit a woman out of state. And you and her concocted now who came up with this plan, but the plan was for you or for her to bring her 12-year-old daughter with her. By the way, there are, this turned out to be the feds on a sting, but there are women who have done so, real women, not some bogus name on, on a, uh, online, but there's real women who have also agreed to sell their children. There are men in prison who I know who bought the children. There was one man, I'll never forget, and I'll go back to this other man, but there's one man who, now we're at Beaumont. Beaumont is pretty rough. They got him off of that compound, I mean, within seconds. Well, not seconds, but minutes. Because an article came out about him. We thought that he was just a crooked cop. No, he was not a crooked cop. He worked for immigration. He was a some sort of deputy official, someone with, with a gun who's also out there, one of the immigration officials. And what happened was, come to find out, he was trafficking kids. Well, they don't play that there, messing with the children. And so once the word came out that that was him, he had to leave. And I mean, within minutes, and I mean, the entire comp I would say the entire company, but a lot of men were looking for him because of the grossness of what he was doing. He had his own little personal harem of 12 year olds. 
13 year olds, 14 year olds. I think it was like five, six or seven of them. I can't remember, but also selling them, having them to stay at this house, having them stay at that house and moving them around. There's a, some organization to this. So now going back to this young man, I asked him, I said, you don't think you're a monster? He said, no, I just, I said, well, let me ask you a question. Let's say you were an older man and you've got a child and someone was to take advantage of your 12 year old daughter. Would you consider that person to be a monster? I would. Let's just be honest. You were, if not still are, a monster. And he was one of the better ones. He was one of the ones that wanted to get help. He was one of the ones, because I can, prom I can tell you this also, in the BOP, as far as that crime is concerned, there's not a lot of help for it. Now, they may want to help them or they make them go through treatment afterwards and they do have sex offender treatment programs in the BOP but they are weak they're light and they're not mandated that's the problem that's the problem and so this little network that this lady was talking about I've heard and seen these networks there are people in, in prison right now they have these sh these beauty contests in in the, in the Bureau of Prison it's not always enforced they're not allowed to have either certain magazines or no magazines at all why you would you you would want to I don't mean I don't mean porn no you're not allowed to have porn in the BOP at all now it makes it makes its way in there but no they're not allowed to, they're not allowed to have good housekeeping they're not allowed to have time or life or sports illustrated they're not allowed to have um, any magazines why because what comes with a magazine they're going to be advertisements and inevitably in those advertisements there are going to be children pictures of children they are not allowed to have pictures of children in magazines or newspapers. And so you would see these raids in the prison and you think they're going to bust somebody with some drugs or some weapons, or some cell phones or some hooch, illegal liquor. No, they're going to bust these guys who are sex offenders to their rooms and go through their stuff and make sure that they don't have any uh, material like that. You mean tell me this guy got caught with a Time magazine, Life magazine, a TV guide, and now he's going, yeah, because what they're doing, they're cutting out these pictures and they are fantasizing over these children and they're selling these pictures. There are some wicked people. Here's the, here's the danger. Here's the problem, guys. Here is the problem. Here is the big problem that no one is talking about. These men are getting out. At some point in time, they're, they all don't have life sentences. Some might have 10 years. Some might have 15 years. Some might have 20 years. Some didn't touch. All they did was have images. Some did touch. Some tried to traffic. Some took kids. This is what's happening. There is a monstrous mentality that is being developed. And I've seen the people who, not only the people who were perpetrators, I mean, the people who were buyers, the people that were uh, the customers of these children, the customers of these videos, the customers of these pictures. I've also seen the people who were bringing them in, bringing them across the border. And what we're not doing with this country is here you've got a, a man, a man who's got four kids with him. By the way, none of the kids look alike. This is, this is just routine. And so that's my child. That's my daughter. That's my son. That's my cousin. And we let them go because we don't care. Why don't we care? Because again, it's what the man said earlier, this country has an appetite uh, for harming children. We've got an appetite for harming children and no one seems to care. As a matter of fact, if you say anything, they're going to label you as though you're the one that's wrong. They're going to label you. And the reason why this is important, guys, is because you need to be as often as you possibly can to be a voice, a loud voice. If a grown person wants to do something to their body, knock yourself out. You're wrong for it. If a grown person wants to engage in homosexuality, knock yourself out. You're wrong for it and God will deal with you. But if a grown person wants to promote it amongst children, no. There is where the problem comes in. Jesus makes this statement. He says that he wants them to come to him because such is the kingdom of heaven. And then he says it would be better for that person if a millstone were hung around his neck and were thrown into the sea than that he would cause one of these little ones to stumble. Is that is that causing them to stumble? I think so. I think so. Now, are there are there some sex offenders who deserve, or I shouldn't say deserve, but who um, will do okay with getting a second chance? There are. There there absolutely are.
But are there also some that should never see the light of day? There, they, they are. There are a bunch of those who, if in prison, you still are doing the very same thing that you did while you were there. In prison, you will find those that are there on a white collar crime, those on a sex offense crime, those on a drug, drug offense crime. Uh, oftentimes, you'll see people who were there for a particular charge engaging in the same activity behind bars. Here's what I mean. Someone who was there on a white collar crime, they may start, there are guys who are investment professionals who are now selling their understanding of investments to other inmates, teaching them how to invest and so forth and charging them. You're not supposed to do that. So, said, well, Corey, why, why wouldn't you teach people how to invest and so forth? I said, I'm not, why? Uh, I'm not going to be involved in the very thing that brought me here. There were those there that were there for a drug offense charge and they were selling products, might be cell phones, might be cigarettes, might be uh, hooch, might be weed. So you're doing the exact same thing, the exact same thing that you did to get you there while you're there. No remorse. As a matter of fact, what's happening is you're becoming more hardened and you become more belligerent and more emboldened to do the exact same thing. You're not going to cut the switch off as soon as you walk out that door. And then there are those who are there on a sex offense charge who are engaged in the same thing. They'll get someone to send them some porn in and they'll sell it. You mean tell me whether it's, it's child porn they're selling or whether it's just traditional porn. The same thing. You want to engage in what brought you here. Well, it's different. No, it's not. No, it's not. And all you're doing is feeding your sexual fetish, your sexual desire, so that when you go out, if you weren't a monster when you came in, you certainly will be when you go out. People will say, Corey, we shouldn't. Yeah, I don't think, I think you should stick to the scriptures and never warn people about these false teachers because God will take care of them. And the, the analogy that I always use would be a sex offender. Some of you have children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and you want to know that if you take your child to the park or to this water park, or what have you, or to this school, that there won't be sex offenders there prowling, looking at them. Well, how do you know? Do we just say, hey, there are sex offenders in this city where there's, there's in this area, Dallas, there is 7 million plus people in the metropolitan area. So to tell me that there are sex offenders here, how do I know? What does that do for me? There are people that are trafficking um, people. How do I know? How do, how, how do I know that that's the case? Or how do I know where they are? You, you might as well tell me, um, you might as well not even tell me if I don't know where they are. So what do we do? We not only tell you that they that there are these criminal ailments, these criminal elements here, and these criminals are here. We tell you one who they are, two what they look like, and three where they live. Some will say that that might be a little bit of overreach, and now the person is punished for, forever. There are some that we 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 probably should let up on them after a while. There are some. The reason for the overreach is because there are some that never should. Because sex offenders, now what we're finding out is that the recidivism rate amongst them is increasing. And no wonder, because you did not give them treatment in the state facilities or the federal facilities. All you did was manage them. All you did was house them, keep them under control. And so now you've got sex crazed people who are coming out. Oh, by the way, the interesting thing is some of the very same things that were used to uh, chemically castrate some of these male sex offenders are now being used on our children if a boy decides he wants to be a girl. The irony of that is amazing. You might have someone who is a who was participating in the sex trade, exploiting these children who from the courts has agreed to become chemically castrated. And then the chance is that one of these kids or some other kid will also be chemically castrated because of this guy's former fetish. This is the kind of country, the kind of world that we live in. And so when someone says, or they want to discourage folks from watching this movie, go watch the movie. Go, buy, buy 10 tickets for people that you don't know. Buy or, or take your cousins, take your friends, take whomever. People need to be aware of this. People need to be aware of the kind of people, and, and here's what's crazy. It's not just men. 
I mentioned about a man who had some kids chained in his basement. Well, I just knew him because this was a male, a male prison. His wife is also in prison at a female prison because she was also, she was bringing them in. She was bringing them in. He was using them and then redistributing them. This is happening, guys. This is not some made up thing. And so whatever the number is, whatever that number is, I'm afraid that the number that we think it is, is undercounting. But we've got a country, though. We've got people who will tell you that it's not that bad. This is part of some kind of conspiracy. It's not. It's not. It's not a conspiracy. This is legitimate. This is true. Um, whatever your worst fears are, if this is one of them, it's, it's here. It's been realized. It's happening. These people, and again, when I went to, you know, in prison, you can work your way down from different custody levels and then make your way from a bad prison to a good prison by you just, you know, doing things the right way, staying out of trouble and so forth. So I ended up getting sent to what you would call a good prison, just a, a sweet yard. This particular sweet yard was here in the DFW area. It is Siegelville. Siegelville is now, it used to be a real laid back sweet yard with weights and room doors and so forth. Uh, it's a, it's a low, low custody. Uh, they don't have them at, they don't have sex offenders at the camp. So that's one of the good things because in many cases, most cases, the camps don't have fences. And so you don't want a sex offender who's serving five more, eight more years being able to walk off. But at this low, this particular low at Siegelville is also home to a sex offender treatment program. So it's real laid back. Uh, you've got a lot of transgender people there, a lot of homosexuals. You've got a lot of sex offenders there for their treatment. The treatment is bogus. Let me just tell you that again. The treatment is bogus. It's weak. It does not work at all. I don't care what some official might tell you. I know for a fact that the men that are going through it, it's a joke to them. They've got workbooks to complete. They go spend a few minutes, an hour or so, a week with this therapist who is only, who is only um, coddling who is only affirming them, telling them it's okay. Uh, remember, this is the federal government that will allow you to go through a sex change on their dime. Now, not the actual surgery, but you've got to go through the, the consultations and get the pills and so forth. And in some cases, it's, I don't know if it's happened yet, but if you had started it, then I think, if I'm not correct, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, the federal government can be forced to finish the program, finish the the surgery. I'm not sure that was where they were leaning when I when I left, but that's this government. That's this government. Um, now, it's bad for a sex offender in prison, especially depending upon what prison. But even at this prison, that was a sex offender prison, a sex offender treatment pr prison, they would still be beaten. They would still be hurt. Um, being a sex offender in prison is a hard life, even at a place where there is a set where a large portion of the of the population are sex offenders. Some places, they don't get to make it. They don't. They, uh, it's hard for them. Some would say rightly so. Now, I had my own little program. Had my own little program at Beaumont, and this was this, because they, they, when I got there, they had maybe two or three. So I, I, it was a small number of sex offenders, maybe two or three on the entire yard. They started sending more and more of them in, more and more. There were some that would use different religions as kind of a way to kind of protect themselves. If you go to prison and you claim to be, you want to be a Muslim and you take the prayer, they give you a hat and your rug, then as far as they're concerned, everything that you've done in the past is gone away with. You're now part of the group. You're now part of the clan and you're off limits. Even if they weren't really true, but they were just hiding, that happens. People, people go to prison and hide amongst certain groups. Now, what would happen is if you were found out that you weren't that and you were just hiding, then they will deal with you. My outlook was somewhat similar. That is, if a person is truly repentant and wants to be helped and be dealt with by Christ, well, then I got your back. I got your back. Um, I was blessed. I would say I was blessed to get a little bit of favor. Not a little. I had, I had some favor there on, on the yards with all the people. I, don't, I wouldn't care if he was in a white gang, if he was in a black gang, Hispanic gang, as Brother Cord. Because if they know that you're serious and you're legitimate and you're trying to help people, well, then they will deal, they, they will treat you as such. Now, if you're on some 
some some some some some junk. Uh, if you own some some crap, they will fight because they see you every day. You can't hide in prison. You you really cannot. What you are will come out. And so I said, treat all of the sex offenders that are at church that are trying, treat them like they're with me. In prison, that means that's part of my group. That's part of my clan. And so the bloods, and this was really funny. This is how God can work. If you are really trying to serve God and grow, you had the bloods, you had crips, you had certain Mexican groups, not all because they hated them too, that would protect them for the sake of the other Christian brothers. Now, here's the deal. If you got caught doing something, if you got caught acting in a certain way or what have you, you're through. Hey, Cord, you know so-and-so and so-and-so is this thing? What? And so what we would do, we would go talk to this guy. Hey, what's, what's happening? Because what it, what it did was it risked the entire community and the yard. Because if someone, if this guy is acting up, doing something, behaving in a certain way, well then, um, and then they go and do something uh, to him or to me or someone else, well, you got these other guys that are, you got a lot of guys that are ready to fight. Now it can become an explosive situation. So we had to make sure that if you're serious, you're going to be serious. If not, myself or Brother Lack said, hey, listen, fine, you're on your own. There were people that were waiting to hear us say, hey, he's not with us. He's not with us. And we had to do it an awful lot. He's not with us. I don't care what, he, he's not with us. We're not protecting them. We're not, we're not putting them out there, but he's not with us because he got caught with some porn. He got caught uh, trying to send letters to some kids. There are guys that are there sending letters to kids. Still. Still. Oh, no, you're not with us. Do I think that some of the treatment that people can get is harsh? Sure. Now, you are allowed to sin how you want to sin. You are allowed to do what you want to. What you're not allowed to do is to complain about the consequences that come with it. Sometimes the consequences, you might get some mercy. Sometimes the consequences are you might get killed. Sometimes the consequences are somewhere in between. And so if you find yourself getting some mercy, and this just goes for everybody, whatever your sin is or was, and you get mercy, well, then praise God. But if you get killed as a result of it, you don't have the right, I don't care what it is, to say, well, I didn't deserve to die. I didn't deserve to lose my arm. I didn't deserve to lose it. No, whatever comes your way because of your sin, you have that coming. I've never, I would never complain about my sin and why I'm in prison. But there are people in prison. This is this is one of the first telltale signs about these people who have done these particular crimes and then complain about the harshness of their sentence. My my point was, I, I didn't I didn't deal with you. I didn't fool with you. If you think that what you did did was not that bad, well then I'm sorry, I can't deal with you because there's nothing about you that that's repentant. And you are the kind of person that will get a, a, a yard ride started because you're over here messing with porn. We're sitting trying to deal, help you out. There are a lot of people there. Let me just say it again, guys. A lot of sick people who aren't getting help. Now, I don't know what program we need to, to establish. I just don't know. I think, I think one of the things that we're going to have, and this is the sad part, guys, we're going to have a lot of people who are going to be released, who are sick, and who will never get better. Let that sink in for a second. There are a lot of people who are sick, who will be released sick, and will never, ever, ever get better. What do you do with them? I think there needs to be some harshness to it. The Bible says this delayed punishment that we're used to doing around here, he says, because I've, you've heard me pull this scripture before, because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed quickly, therefore the hearts of the sons of men among them are given fully to do evil. You take your time with the crime or, or with dealing with the criminal, then what are they going to do? Their heart is going to be, is going to grow coarse, callous even more so, and then they will do even more so because they've grown that way. You, you, you're building an even greater monster. You think that because he's five foot two, 130 pounds, um, that he's, that he can't hurt. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. He will, he will spend his money to pay for that child and someone else with a gun or someone else bigger who can hurt that child will deliver that child to him. Yeah, now now you can order a child. Now you can have, hey, meet or, not necessarily to your house, but meet us over at this hotel. If we want to, if you want to push government to spend money anywhere, have them push, push money 
and resources there. I mentioned earlier about the state and federal resources. The problem with the states is the states don't have enough of the resources and the network to keep up with this. You're in Kentucky. And here's this, this sex ring that comes through. If they're local, you can. But what if the sex ring is passing through or it's bigger? You can't get your hands on all of the tentacles. The federal government can. But as we see right now, our federal government isn't isn't as interested as they ought to be. And so if you want to have an issue that you need to be pushing for, whoever you're going to be voting for next year, that should be the main issue for these kids who can't who can't support themselves. So about this movie, go watch it. But even after this movie, be vigilant. You're going to see, I, I promise you, you're going to see kids out there who do not belong with the person that they're with. Be proactive. Because the one thing they won't do is they won't fight you over that kid in the middle of the streets. That won't happen. That's too much of a risk. Because while this kid is valuable, he's not so valuable to where it would upset the apple cart and endanger the rest of the system. Take pictures. Take videos. Report this stuff. You need to be this whole anti-snitching campaign that seems to be prevalent in our society. No, snitch, tell, tell. I did. I I was never one that would advocate it in prison because hey, you know what yeah, that'll get you killed. But I would tell the people, hey, listen, some some telling is good, some snitching is good. This one, snitch, tell. If you see something, say something. Because it might actually be your kid. There are people out there. Have you all seen the little videos or the messages where they said, ladies? If you see certain things tied to your car, like to your door handle, uh, around your uh, mirror, outside mirror, hurry up and cut it off because it might mean something, maybe a twisty tie, a zip tie. Those are legitimate. Those are, le that is something that you should be afraid of. If you go out of your car and you see something on your car that you didn't put there, remove it and then avoid going back to that place for some time if it's where you work well then make sure that you make sure that you're around someone uh, who knows you and you can walk in and out if it's your daughter your niece your cousin make sure they know there are people out there even here in america that are you don't have they don't they're not only interested in kids from south america they're interested in kids or women period the report we saw was there are also adult women that are trafficked. So you be vigilant. Reject this foolishness that we see coming from Rolling Stone, from CNN, from MSNBC, and all the others that are pushing. Because, again, I saw someone say it in the chats. Why? Who would want to push back against this? Who? What is your interest in putting this, making sure this movie didn't see the light of day? And even some people have stated that some AMC theaters have all of a sudden had problems with their equipment or have canceled the movies. The question is who? We know the answer. The, the, the main answer uh, or the first answer would be money. But the greater answer would be Satan. Someone says, I, I can't see the movie. Well, and, and I, can, I can understand that. I can, I can understand that um, because it can... It can elicit problems. Do you know that while we were in prison, what's the movie? Um, a Time to Kill came out on was it TNT or TBS? One of those shows. You know, we have we have cable in the prison, so A Time to Kill was going to show up. It's going to show on TV. No, they cut the cable for about two or three hours. Why? Because the last thing they wanted to do was to give the inmates in prison a reason to be riled up. Oh, some sex offenders, well, some sex offenders got beat up that day anyway. Just because of the the uh, the commercial advertising this movie's getting ready to play. You know the movie with, with Samuel L. Jackson who kills the, the guy who, who molests his child? That movie was going to play. And no. The captain got word. Said, no, we can't play that. We can't. We can't have that. Um, and I, I like that. I like that. Amen. Don't uh, don't see the movie, but buy a ticket. Please buy a ticket because you can buy a ticket for someone else. Thank God for Angel Studios on this one. Amen to them. So yeah, that that would be a good idea. Um, we're gonna do the same thing too. We're gonna do the same thing too. Now I can't watch it. I was thinking about trying to watch it tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure if I can. Uh, the, my grandchildren's other grandparents have them, which is funny. They live right right across the street. My grandkids 
grandparents on this side of the street and on that side of the street. So they have their grandparents on both sides. So, so the first three days, they're over there. The next three or four days, they'll be over here. So we take possession of our children, our grandchildren on Saturday. So I can't watch it on Saturday. I, was, I thought about going on Saturday or Sunday, so I can't do it on, on Saturday or Sunday. But and I can't do it on Monday because we'll still have them. Tuesday, I think we'll still have them for the first part, but I might go Tuesday. We're going to watch this. My, 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 my third oldest child, she went and watched it, and she said it was wonderful. And as a matter of fact, uh, theirs were free. Some, some folks paid, paid it forward for some other people, so they, they went for free. Laura said, thank you for the Super Chat. She says also said it was a very good movie. Yeah, we, we need more of this stuff out here. Uh, but it's going to be a problem because they will categorize this in the same category of coming against transgender children. Anything that looks like it's trying to protect children, they'll put in that same category because the very same folks like us who are against this are also against this experimenting with our children. And so we've got to stamp that out. This can't, this can't be allowed to go forward. So guys, do me a favor. Do your very best to alert people to this movie to, about this that's happening in our country and just to be vigilant. But don't do what we normally do as a country or as a people. We're vigilant for a few days. Coretta Scott King said it best. She says we are a five-day country, meaning we mourn something, we pay attention to something for about five days, and after that, it's back to normal. Make this a part of who you are. Always be on the lookout for this stuff. Always be on the lookout. No, I understand, JL, uh, why people don't, because some people just can't watch it. Now, there are some people that have been um, maybe touched or violated in their past, and so things like that might trigger them, or it could be that it's just bothersome to them. Some folks get angry. Yeah, I don't want you going out and getting so angry that you want to pick up, a, pick up a, an instrument and do violence or hurt someone else. I don't want you to do that. I just want you to be angry enough to where you're going to want to do whatever you can to help prevent it. That's all. We're not, we're not saying, hey, go out and be uh, vigilantes or anything like that. But if you see something, say something. If you see something, say something. Record. We all have these phones. Call somebody. Get 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 them get them on your on video, what have you. Let the authorities know. Get their get their um, license plate number. Go go ahead and be go ahead and be caring. Save a child. Be caring to save a child. That that's fine. If a person, hey, listen, we just want to make sure, all right, if that if that person gets hassled, inconvenienced, for that reason, I think that is a, I think that's a worthwhile cause. I think that's a good reason for someone to be inconvenienced. So if you pull me over and you wonder if this is my child, hey, officer, I understand. I, I, I understand. Now, depending upon who pulls me over, I'm going to move real slow. I'm going to have my head. Listen, I'm, I'm moving. Why are you moving so slow, sir? I have to ask for your license and registration because I want to make sure I give you my license and registration and I get my whole hand and body back. But I don't have a problem with you making sure that this is my child or my grandchild or my niece or what have you. No problem. Also, I need you out here doing your job. Uh, stop this crime. Matter of fact, can I donate to the policeman's fund? No problem, officer. But in this case, you do want to make sure you do want to make sure that you're vigilant. Yeah, Joel. Uh, corn supplementing the C for the P is a is horrible because of what it can do to you. What it can do to you. Yeah, yeah. I, Angel Studios is not owned by the Mormons, guys. They just they're they're part of the production studio that that happened to to bring out Chosen. There's a lot of parts that were used to bring out the movie Chosen that have nothing to do with Mormonism. So that's not that's not the case either, guys. At least I don't think it's the case. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's the case. But the message, as as Dinah so aptly said, the point is the point. The main point is the main point. And so, if if atheists put the movie out, it's a good movie. It's a worthwhile thing. So, guys, do your very best to be diligent about this. And, and I'm sorry to have to bring this to you, but it it bothered me when I saw this. It bothered me so much. So, I mean, I, I was, I thought I was going to be more, more emotional about it <laughs> because I was earlier. I really was. I'm talking about, I was angry. I was, I couldn't hit the screen because it was my own screen. I'm not going to break my own screen because I was angry at the person on the screen, but 
um, we're going to keep calling stuff out. And listen, if if we take a shot from YouTube, which is probably which which may happen, they removed one video before in the past. I don't, okay, fine, whatever, whatever. We'll keep it coming. We we will because it's going to happen. We're going to have to fight more and more for the cause of Christ, and especially even now, also guys, for the cause of these children. So guys, let's say be diligent, and in the meantime as well, be blessed. Amen.